Between Two Amps is proudly sponsored by Liquid Death. Um, you know, right now, I am enjoying a mango chainsaw. I've got some severed lime. If you don't know, they have uh, some new flavors that have come out recently. And they're amazing. They're really good. Yeah, it's it's. It, there's a little bit of agave infused agave, in there, yeah. and you know, so it really makes those those flavors pop. I'm really, yeah, I'm, I'm actually it. really stoked on. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really good. Uh, <laughs> murder your thirst, by the way. Um, that's what I do daily. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I could possibly get through a podcast without murdering my thirst. thirst. I agree. I Same. mean, really, I I don't think I could riff. Yeah. Without yeah, murdering my thirst, I, I mean, I mean, is there, is there anything that you can think of that you could possibly do without murdering your thirst? No. 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 Yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, I can murder my thirst. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. But I murder. <laughs> I definitely murder it was, a it lot was of a, songs. It was a. It was a perfect thirst murder. Perfect to thirst murder. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Liquid Death. Appreciate it. Thank you to Liquid Death. Uh, and, and uh, watch uh, our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said watch our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to our podcast. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, murder your thirst. Yep. <laughs> he was looking for a life that would give him the feeling of being worthwhile. Welcome to another episode of Between Two Amps. Today we have a spectacular guest. Uh, you might know him from F Minus, Rats in the Wall, Leftover Crack, Adolescence, and now most recently, Instant Ruin, which is great. Definitely check out their SoundCloud. Give a warm Between Two Amps route. Welcome to Brad Logan. Oh. <laughs> the crowd goes wild. The crowd, <laughs> the crowd went wild. The crowd goes mild. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, thank you so much for, for coming on the show. Yeah. Oh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, you guys. Thanks for having me. Um, so I you know, I guess what it started off just kind of how we, we start all of these off and you know, yeah. what what was your uh you know your first uh, like or how did you get into to music and what inspired you to first pick up an instrument i mean if we want to go way way back you know um i i would have to uh blame or attribute uh that to my parents um who uh um you know, my, my mother would bring home uh, records for me when I was a little kid from from the garage sales and from the swap meet. You know, you could get, you know, Black Sabbath records for a quarter. And, it, you know, and that's what I she would bring me some Sabbath, you know, Alice Cooper, um, awesome. you know, Deep Purple, shit like that. And, and uh, at, at uh, least uh, good parents, at least in that respect. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't and, want to assume about any other aspects. Oh no, no. She, she was great. Yeah. And and then they also bought me my first guitar when I was probably around. Oh, that's 10. awesome. Yeah. They, you know, it's like it was an acoustic guitar, you know, and, and um I wish I still had it. And and uh and they signed me up for like group guitar lessons at, at the community center, the Edison Community Center and, and so um I went down there, you know, once a week and, and learned how to, you know, do a G chord and a D chord and, and, uh, mm -hmm. and then I took, you know, um, private lessons at a music store by my house, um, for a little bit, I think probably about a year. And, uh, um, you know, I got a little bit better, you know, I learned how to do, um, you know, like finger pick and stuff, I guess, which I, I don't really use. Oh, that's, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I did, I got, I, you know, I got introduced to that and, um, uh, and, and so, and then I, you know, at that point I, I started to try and play along with those records that, that my mom had got me, you know, and, and, uh, yeah. and I started getting into other, you know, this was like, 
you know, in that period of, of, you know, the mid seventies, I guess. And, you know, so I had sort of buying Aerosmith records and um, kiss and stuff like that. And, yeah, you know, yeah. I would just, I'd play along to those and, and I had no concept of tuning to the record or anything, you know, right. So uh, I would just <laughs> keep, you know, messing with the, the neck, you know, until I, f- I found something that sound sounded like it. And I would figure out mm-hmm. my own version of, of, you know, hotter than hell or whatever, yeah. you know. Awesome. <laughs> so, so was that, did you grow up in New Jersey? I grew up in Huntington Beach, oh, California. Huntington Beach. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You said yeah. Edison. I didn't know if. Uh, oh, there's an Edison, Edison, New Jersey. Yes, there is. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's a, a high school here uh, called Edison High School. Was oh, okay. Uh, one I went to, yeah. Nice. So, so you were doing all of this on like your acoustic guitar and yes. just kind of figuring things out. Like, and where did punk show up in, in all of this? Like, was that uh, a, a later incarnation? Because like this would have been, so you're saying like mid 70s. So like what, what was kind of the first foray for you into, into punk? Ah, uh, shit. You know, it, it probably, um, it was a, a, a fucking two-pronged effort. Uh, I was in, I remember when I first got introduced to punk, I was in, in grade school, you know, probably mm-hmm. seventh or eighth grade. Um, and uh, I stumbled upon, um, you know, we, we only had, we had like a radio, a stereo system that was in the living room at, at you know, our house. And, um, I, I don't even know if I had my own turntable at that point yet, but, uh, my folks would let me flip through the dials, you know, on yeah. designated nights and, and I stumbled on Rodney on the rock, um, um, you know, uh, around that period, yeah. which, you know, um, and, but then also in school, in grade school, kids started coming to class, you know, talking about, you know, um, or whatever the sex pistols and, and, yeah. uh, um, you know, new wave shit. And then w- we also had like, I remember one time we had this band come and play in, in the, you know, in the quad at, at my grade school. Um, I, it was during lunchtime or something. And these were like long haired surfer dudes, but they were playing like sex pistols <laughs> songs. You know what I mean? And, and, and uh, you know, what, what I assumed to be other punk songs at the time, uh, but didn't, you know, know, um, didn't know. but, but I, it's like, Oh, that's a sex with song because I knew it from Rodney on the rock and Oh, that's a dead boy song. Cause I knew that from Rodney on the rock uh-huh. and then they were, I don't think they were doing any originals or anything. So, um, that was my first introduction yeah, into yeah. it. Um, long before going to gigs, you know, and then there was, you know, the, the sort of the, um, you know, the, uh, um, uh, the guy in the neighborhood that had all the imports, you know, the older dude yeah. that, that had the fucking rad mm-hmm. sound system and all the import records and knew what was going on, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and we would go over to his house and, and like smoke weed and he would play us shit, right? Me and a couple of my friends like check this out, you know, and throw <laughs> on like, you know, some bizarre, you know, um, you know, new wave and, and, you know, punk was, from England. Yeah it was all mixed together then, you know, and, uh-huh. and, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like the normal, you know, that TVOD seven inch was just like, just mind blowing, you know? And, uh, um, so I started getting hit to a lot of stuff, uh, through, uh, that guy. Right. Um, mm-hmm. which is my friend's older brother, you know? Yeah. Um, well, I th- something that always try and it's interesting, like to hear you say like early on, like, you know, surfer dudes, like gravitating towards sex pistols and something, you know, like I, I grew up in, in, like most of my punk experience, like awakening was Virginia, like so Richmond, Virginia, DC, um, and you know, towns around in, in Virginia. And you know, it punk was very much like a uh you know, it was n- not accessible to I mean it was accessible to anyone, but it wasn't something like shared with like the football team. Like where right. In LA, it seemed it, like something that has uh, I was always assumed like 
you know, bands that I heard, you know, through going to the record store, like, like that's how I was exposed to like social distortion or like Pennywise or some of these, yeah. you know, later bands that like I thought were, you know, I, I just in my head envisioned, you know, like these like minded punks like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. going up. And it's interesting you saying like, you know, like Rodney Bingenheimer, like his radio show, like having something like that, because there wasn't anything like really on the radio that was broadcasting this music. Yeah, and it just kind of stuck in my head there. I was like, "Oh, okay, so that kind of makes sense." How like it's like seeing like what shows like the turnout. It's like seeing like a very like especially like Orange County, like very it can be kind of broy at times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at punk shows, yeah. which was I was like, "Huh, I didn't expect that." <laughs> yeah, it's super weird because when I first saw uh, Social D, and I was a huge Social Distortion fan from back you know when i first got into playing music and just listening to punk and uh i was like yeah and i saw them in chicago a bunch i was like yeah cool all the punks go to them you know blah blah and they got kind of like the rockabilly thing but then later on but then on it came out here i was working for um king's road which is epitaph was part of epitaph at one point and uh i went to see social distortion when the, the, i guess they had a new record coming out and it was at the palladium in la and i was like what the fuck is going on like everybody's yeah. like cosplaying and like 50s like gear and it was like hurley yeah. guys and like like i was like this is so weird <laughs> so <different>. yeah yeah <laughs> but that was just my experience coming from the yeah. you know i grew up in the midwest which is like you know complete different but then you're like oh okay i see i see how everything like fits together now yeah it's it's weird you know this was like um you know long before computers or fucking smartphones or you know yeah. I, it's like unbelievable that anybody even found out about anything you know what i mean right. and, i know like no yeah. wonder it took so long to get to the midwest and stuff like that because here it was like you know i think it was only because orange county was in close proximity to to hollywood you know uh -huh. and so there was that like trickle down and we had some clubs here we had the cuckoo's nest and the golden bear and so new wave acts would come through Iggy yeah. and, and you know the damned and stuff like that and mm -hmm. so people you know I couldn't imagine you know being in like Tulsa Oklahoma you know and like how the oh, fuck no. are you gonna find out about any of this stuff you know unless you yeah. happen to stumble upon trouser press or enemy or something See? like that and, yeah. and and then like who the fuck else in your town you know how are you even gonna find anybody else like that's into this stuff you know <laughs> Yeah, I remember um, yeah. like so many like so many records I ordered like through mail order was just like looking down like you didn't even see like the cover art. No, <laughs> no, just, like, just the yeah. name sounds cool. This yeah. name sounds interesting. I'll yeah, try yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like when I was growing up, you know, there's obviously no no like comp like you know technology we have right now. So like anytime there would be a show in Chicago, since we were like kind of the hub in the Midwest and Minnesota and Minneapolis, but you'd have people coming in from like Cedar Rapids. You'd have people coming in because they just, look, we don't get shows, you know, we have to, you know, we're coming out here to see shows and it's just like, uh, or even go record shopping because they didn't have, they didn't have a record store in their town. You know, it's like yeah. the small, the small farm towns, you know, it's just like, holy shit. You know, you realize you're like, wow. Okay. You know, I was totally. really lucky to grow up in, even though for us too, we had, you know, at that time, like you had to find the niche record store where I could find like, uh, Descendants record, you know, on on tape, and then I'd also see like a SOD shirt. I'm like, that looks awesome. I'm gonna buy that. I don't even know what the band sounds like, but their shirt looks fucking kick ass. You know? Yeah. And and I would say also, as far as the punk scene, you know, and the people that that were you know gravitating towards it at that period, you know, you wouldn't have like, um, you know, the foot the football team. There would be like the one or two guys from the football team that were fucking completely, you know, just fucking insane, you know, or, yeah, or yeah, you know, yeah, oddballs, yeah. right? Because it attracted yeah. like all of these misfits yeah. and people that, yeah. that were like, like serious fucking, you know, like real deal dysfunctional and, and just, you know, you know, from the onset, like new looked around and especially here. Cause it was like, you know, conservative, you know, manicured suburban, you know, um, 
you know, and, and so it was people that looked at this and went, this is all fucking garbage, you know? And, and, uh, um, plus if you were like, you know, people would want to, you know, you would get, you know, cops or, or like groups of, um, people wanting to murder you for just having like bleached hair and a fucking, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, yep. like a button down yeah. thrift store shirt and peg pants, you know, was like, um, enough Your to like, target. it was, yeah. yeah, it was enough to get you beaten to a pulp, you know? And, and, uh, so I'm had, glad I was a decade after that. <laughs> yes. So, you, so you had to back, you had to back your, you know, be able to back your, your fucking shit up. And, and, um, yeah, I think, you know, and, and, or, or you just didn't care, you know, you didn't care if it, yeah, yeah. like, go ahead, beat the shit out of me, you know? And, and, uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, but still it just took, so, when I think about it, like how fast information is transmitted these days, just took, so, you know, you would get a guy with a record and then he would show it to everybody. And then people would like, pick, uh, like, look at how they're dressed. And you would get like this misinterpretation of what yeah, was yeah. going on. You know, it was just like, uh, you know, how did anybody get anything done? I don't know. You <laughs> I mean, know? even, even like, like looking, I remember like, uh, first getting, uh, the, I think it was a video of minor threat playing nine thirty club. It's like that famous one. Yeah. And the place is just going ballistic. And I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. Mm. You know? And it was like, yeah. You know, we never, but now that will be out like someone's, you know, fucking shooting it on their phone and it's going to be up on the internet in like, you know, like 20 minutes. Right. You know, it's like, so it's no, like, you couldn't fake magic. it. You had, oh, yeah. you had to be there, right? <laughs> yeah, you, could, yeah. you couldn't just watch the shit on YouTube. No. You had to fucking be there. You had to be there. You had to be yeah. there. You had to go through it. Like, I can't tell you how many times I got when I was really, really young, starting to go to shows. I'd have to lie to my parents and then I'd go and just like fucking the scariest people, skinheads, fucking yeah. these crazy derelict dudes just from in the city of Chicago that are just gnarly. And you're like, something's oh, yeah. going to go wrong real fast right now. You know, in and gnarly, like, but that was in, hard. In yeah. gnarly parts of town where you're like a little yeah. kid, you know, yeah. walking through like scary parts of town right it's like oh my god i'm gonna get murdered you know you'd show up to the show and you'd see these guys who look like they're like homeless jumping out of a fucking shitty van and you know bring out these amps and guitars and you're like i was like oh my god i want to i want to fucking do that you know i want to see that i want one of those guitars and i didn't even know what the fuck it was you know yeah but that's how, you know, that's how I like, cause like, I want to start playing guitar. I want to start being in a band. So it's like, I, I don't know how your journey was, as far, you know, from going from, you know, taking those lessons and then learning. And then all of a sudden just being like, okay, we're going to start a band. <laughs> it was a long journey to get there. You know? <laughs> I got asked to join a band. Uh, I don't know mm -hmm. if I would have started one on my own, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, but I got asked to join one. Um, you know, when I was about 15 or 16, I think. And, uh, um, you know, it was, uh, uh, um, uh, I was the, a drummer originally, uh, mm -hmm. and we just did covers. And then a couple of years later, um, after I officially went punk, I got asked to join another band as a guitar <laughs> player. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I couldn't even connect. Like there wasn't even at this period, like b being a, a a touring punk band wasn't even a thing. There was no yeah, like yeah. DIY touring was not um, like Black Flag was the first band that I heard of that was doing DIY touring, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and you know, some of the members of that first band I was in were were also in Black Flag, and that's how mm -hmm. I knew about it. And and uh, I just couldn't, be, you know, because I thought, you know, before that it was like you had to have like a record contract, and you know, like. You, you were only on tour if you were like a fucking some star or something, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like them and like, you know, DOA and, and the, you know, but I didn't know DOA or anything. And, and mm -hmm. Circle Dirks and those bands were like, they were just like, fuck it. We're going to fucking just get out there. Yeah. And fucking total shithole. And it just doesn't yeah. matter, you know, and which is what they did, you know. And and uh, and it was like, oh, you could actually really do this, you know. It's it's interesting to hear like every it seems like every city has kind of the the touring lineage like the band that kind of you know the the local band that either learned from another band or you know figured it out on their own like yeah. um it's kind of fun. like Richmond was it was Gwar and then 
like a veil started touring because Gore was just like, here's all our contacts, like go out, yeah. book yeah. <laughs> tour. And then a veil goes out and everybody's like, oh, you can tour? That That's yeah. cool. So then like all these other bands start going. So like, do you happen to like, so Black Flag was the first in like the Los Angeles area? That, that, that the you first, know, right. And then all of those SST, like the Minutemen and yeah, yeah. That, they would come back from tour and they would just look like they'd been in a fucking prison camp somewhere. <laughs> it was like, what the fuck happened to you out there? You know, they would be like fucking 15 pounds skinnier, just bearded, dirty and insane, you know, just insane. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, I was like, that sounds, this looks fucking awesome. Right. <laughs> <laughs> It's so yeah. funny to think that that's attractive. Like it's, it's just like what there's nothing attractive, but it's totally attractive. Yeah. <laughs> like I, mean, I couldn't no imagine was, not doing it. <laughs> well, and doing like they, they weren't going on tour for four weeks. They were doing like six fucking months, four month tours. You know, right. they would play literally every fucking shithole between here and in you know fucking Halifax, right? Like just. You come into your town, you know, <laughs> and it was totally attractive to me. I'm like, I really, this is what I want to do, you know. Uh, I, yeah, couldn't, I, I couldn't understand not wanting to do that. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? you want to job somewhere? What's wrong with you? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, and that carries over, just like because you know, it's like, oh, I'll quit my job right now because I'm going to go on tour and I don't care, <laughs> you know, because I want to be on the road. You know, I, oh, I, get I, I was never going to be able to afford to take a vacation to an exotic fucking, you know, to exactly. Europe. Like, you know, how the I was a kid. How the fuck am I going to get thousands? Of, I'm not going to be able to do this. <laughs> yeah. This is the only way I'm ever going to see it anywhere. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah. that was just totally like the driving force was Europe. Like that was kind of like. I want to get to Europe. How do you get there? Like, oh, I have to tour here first. Cool. I mean, like, that's cool. Getting I'll see this the whole town. You know, was the <laughs> motivator, right? How am I going to get the fuck out of here? I have no money. I have nothing. Yeah, you know, no skills. You know, <laughs> yeah. the way out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, it's like that's how. I mean, I got to go. See, that's how I got to see Europe is playing in a band. You know, it's like that totally. was that was it. And for me, it was like that was like okay. I'm going to do stuff that a lot of people don't get to do. And even though like, you know, other people, they glamorize it. They're like, well, you were on tour, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, some of the stuff was like nicer towards the end. You know, you might have, but man, it was like playing squats. You're playing fucking, you know, all these like crazy, you might play a good club in like Munich and then you're playing like a fucking squat in Italy. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, <laughs> you're living like a dog, but you're getting to see, like, to me, you're, you're getting to see, you said it like, you know you're getting to see the real fucking uh naples italy or yeah you know, the real you know what's really going on in in fucking hamburg germany from the perspective yeah. of like somebody who lives there you yeah. know like you, you know you're going on vacation from your your job and and you know you booked this four-star hotel and you do you know you're you're not getting like a realistic view to me you know of, of what's yeah. going on. nice and stuff i guess but yeah, yeah. Like, when you're on tour, you're fucking living it, man. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, there's some stories like just being in Europe. I'm just like, there's no way that I would have been here. Like if I was wasn't in a band, there's no way I would have showed up in this like middle of nowhere, East Germany, a fucking youth, uh, like fucking camp or something like that. And like and they're having like there's a skateboard ramp and then there's punk shows and the whole town shows up. So there's yeah. like 300 kids going ape shit because they never have anything like this you know it's like it's amazing totally yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's so, like oh go on fred oh no no so it's it, it's interesting like because it for me it, it it was always like like i love playing and i love the like i i enjoy playing an instrument i love the creative process but it's almost like it's as important if not more the experiential aspect of it of like all of my memories as an adult are pretty much tied to 
like you know or a majority of them are tied to going on tour going playing shows yeah. like who i was there with like like it's like it's almost the best part <laughs> you know it's like yeah. you know the creative is kind of a means to like getting to see the world yes yeah. it's it's like the the yeah, it's the icing, right? It's like, yeah. and you get to go do, you know, I think um, that's how it was for me. It's like, oh, being in a band's cool and writing and, and you know, I, I didn't, I went on tour before I ever made any records, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and so um, that, you know, they, they kind of, uh, you know, one hand washed the other. It's like, oh, you know, and I get to go on tour and and really it's like, um, you know, that, that, that's an experience not to be missed. There's nobody in my family that has been to a squad in Italy and played in front of the whole town. That, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And one Euro to get in. Yeah. Was, yeah. They had a radio station and a fucking, you know, weed plantation. And yeah, you know, yeah. Just, you know, um, in this building that was, you know, fucking 800 years old. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just like yeah, totally just like what you know we yeah, fucking you know, we played a show we played a, it's crazy we played a show in this town called Berchtesgaden garden in germany which is uh in the bavarian alps one of the most beautiful towns i've ever seen and it turns out we're going and it's like oh it's the hitler's eagle's nest is in that town it's at the top yeah, and yeah. we're like what and the tour and the, our tour manager was like yeah we're playing this town um and uh, it's like kind of like the hick, like they call it the German hick town, I guess. But it was like beautiful, like tourist town. But a lot of people go there can be a little sketchy because they're going to kind of, you know, because that's where the eagle, eagles nest was. And you can go up there, but it's not a, there's nothing up there, I guess. Now it's something different. But um, we had time to kill. And he's like, well, I know that I know up in the mountains a little bit. If we go like maybe like 15, 20 minutes, there's a swimming pool. Let's go. We go to the swimming pool and it's all black marble. And it used to be a, hit, uh, a, youth, a Hitler youth camp swimming pool. And it's yeah. like me, three Jewish dudes from New York with fucking tattoos. And we all just jump in the pool. We're like, this shit is fucking insane. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I remember seeing going to Berlin for the first time. And, and there were bullet holes in the walls in, in Kreuzberg. And, and it's just like, you know, oh, my God. This like, you know, then it dawns on you that the shit that you were being taught in school really happened. You know, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and, and it was just yeah. an incredible experience. You know, I think they like a lot of that, they sealed up a lot of those bullet holes now. Uh, you know, was this uh, uh, SO36 or around that, right around there? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been back, you know, I've, I've been going there, you know, a long time now. And, and I, it's like, where are all the fucking bullet holes that used to be here? You know, that they're, they're like gone, right? So, um, I would think you know you would want that up there as, as you know a, a right reminder, yeah yeah you know but i guess it's not good for tourism maybe i don't know what was the the first tour that you did what, were you playing drums on that or and uh, what band was that the first tour i did was uh i was in this band called harry carey who were from here from san pedro and uh it was uh 1982 i want to say or 82 or 83 and uh we did probably we did a week's worth of shows um down you know through arizona texas oklahoma and we were opening for the for the misfits we played with uh, a couple shows with the misfits a couple shows with uh, or a, a show with who's do show with this band called none of the above um with played with the big boys, Butthole Surfers. Nice. Um, pizza place nice. and where were they from? They were from um San Antonio. You, oh, they're San Antonio, that's right. Maybe my, yeah, I think I think it was in San Antonio. And uh and that was my first tour and and um uh you know there was no like uh you know footprint really for it. You know, it was just kind of uh it was in January, I remember. So it was like freezing in all these places, and uh, um, it was it was amazing, you know. <laughs> so, what, so were you playing guitar on that, or I was playing guitar? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. what 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 was your kind of set like going into 
started to play in punk bands, like, were were you conscious of what you were playing, or was it just kind of whatever was there was kind of what you were playing? Conscious in 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 like uh, like were was there like was there like cool yeah. gear that you thought you just like man if I had this I yeah that would sound like yeah inspire me. yeah like is it is it like you know Marshalls or is it you know like yeah yeah whatever uh, you can get your hands on yeah. <laughs> I mean, at that time, you could still get like used stuff for rel- you know, relatively cheap, right? And yeah, yeah, uh, you know, good stuff that was you know, Gibsons and Fenders, and and um, uh, I had uh, an Epiphone. Um, it was a le- like a Les Paul Junior Epiphone thing um, with a humbucker in it, uh, which I would never use these days, but at the time. <laughs> Like I was a kid, I was like, "Fuck yeah, humbucker!" Yeah, yeah. And a um, a Fender Twin was the amp that I was oh, playing. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, with the um, I think I don't even know if I had a distortion box because it was like a Demarzio Super Distortion pickup or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it sounded super hot. <laughs> sounded hot when you had it cranked, right? And and, yeah. uh, and I think on some of those older, you could find those older twins that that had some grit to them, you know. Okay. Uh, and and you know Steve Jones certainly had one and and uh, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, I used all kinds of different amps when I was a kid and and um, had all kinds of guitars. You know, um, I would say what I really, you know, um, one of the first guitars I ever owned was a Gibson SG. Um, it, you know, with uh, it had. Um, mini humbuckers um, oh really yeah it had these black mini humbuckers and, and it was kind of like a a lower priced fucking student guitar kind of thing right mm-hmm. okay so is, is it was it like the the p100 like the stacked humbuckers no they were um or was uh, it like the deluxe like the les paul deluxe like mini humbuckers yeah you could like google it it's like an you know a 70s sg uh, it might have been um it wasn't an SG special, um, but it was, uh, uh, um, it had a, uh, it didn't have any binding on the neck and it had, um, these black, like plastic two mini humbuckers. Um, and, and I, you know, I got it at a music store. I got it at, at one of the music stores, um, uh, by me, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. and, uh, um, and I, again, I did a, a horrible thing, which I would, you know, r- regret to this day. I took out one of the mini humbuckers and brought it out and threw in a full size humbucker. Just fucked, you know, like just yeah, ruined, did, you know? and uh, yeah. uh, uh, and and then sold it to a friend of mine uh, who I think still has it to this day. Um, that's that's. Yeah, I- <laughs> but yeah, I, I did the with, same thing. I didn't know any any better. I had a seventy two SG with a Bigsby, and I was like, I want to take the Bigsby off and put in a fucking EMG, and then like you know, <laughs> oh god, it was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> I wanted a Les Paul and a fucking Marshall, you know, but those were just out of reach, you know, just a mm-hmm. little bit out of reach. Six hundred dollars was what le- new Les Pauls were going for, six and seven hundred dollars, and that was mm-hmm. like couldn't afford that. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot when you're a little kid, you know. Um. Uh, but, um, fenders were always pretty cheap, you know, you get fender in and, yeah. and the good if you, if you cranked them, you know, run them on 10, um, yeah. right. You Dude, get, a twin on 10 though. <laughs> not, you know, not always a twin. Um, I remember, um, uh, basements, I think were, uh, they're 45 for the most. Yeah. Crank those. Yeah. Yeah. And I had, uh. What else did I have? I had, um, uh, I might've had, I know I had a Fender Twin. I might've had a, um, uh, um, the one that had the four tens in it. I can't remember what it was called. But, oh, uh, I think there was a basement life. Wasn't there a basement four ten? There was a basement four ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basement four ten. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. And those would overdrive pretty good, you know. I wasn't really. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was like uh, pre-metal, you know. Um, yeah, you're not looking you know. for high gain, right? 
right yeah so um you know i was getting the sound that that i wanted which was i wanted to sound like steve jones you know yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know uh so uh it wasn't until you know and that was throughout the i guess the 80s and and um and i wasn't really um you know, I was, uh, you know, aware of stuff that I wanted and stuff that I liked, but I didn't really become like, uh, you know, an Uber gear nerd, you know, till um, much later, right? Um, 90s and stuff, right? It was where... Uh, yeah. I feel like that's where a lot of it took off, too, is like with all the, the boot, like at least, uh, I mean, definitely 80s, like with Hot Rod and Marshalls and like all of yeah. these, like, you know, all the modifications and rack gear and all that stuff that was happening. But then like in the nineties, when all the boutique builders started coming out and recognizing like, Hey, the old stuff was pretty good. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know because it was either a sign that I was, um, becoming more discerning w with my, my tone or that I was just getting bored now and tweaking out on fucking shit. I can't yeah. be able to figure that out. <laughs> because I never think about stuff like speakers, like yeah, yeah. Speakers. you know, this it, how it would just either I'd be aware sometimes <laughs> that I get the sound that I wanted or that I could, you know, and I didn't give any thought to the components in the chain, you know, and and now, yeah. It's, oh well, yeah, the fucking speakers are everything, you know, and and have experimented with different combos of, you know, yeah. Uh, it just gone down some fucking embarrassing rabbit hole. <laughs> it, man, if only like it's, I, I I I wish I could catalog like just like my search history. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just like all of the crazy rabbit holes. Like I've got, like I was looking. I have like an old, uh, it's a 1972 Marshall, uh, Rolla Celestian cab that yeah. you know, like I got for 400 bucks like and it's all the original speakers it's like black, black yeah it, and it's it's actually greenbacks so they're they're 25 watt rolla celestian greenbacks and they sound incredible and the cabinet's like been to hell and back. like the the tolex is like barely hanging on but it yeah. sounds amazing yeah and i was just like i i think i spent three hours the other day like looking for because they had a different sized uh speaker input check because <laughs> it's missing from it the is. cab and i have like a washer <laughs> that i like bolted the <laughs> the input jack to i was just like oh, i wonder if i could find one of those it's just like but it was like a whole thing because no one makes them anymore it's like this like two whole thing and it's just like Talk about and then i got to the end of it and i was like i I spent three hours on this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, the, the funny thing is, I've done that too, and spent thousands of dollars experimenting with shit, buying it, then selling it, and then buying something else, and then, you yeah. know, right? Because, you know, there's, um, uh, you can't really try that stuff out in a fucking, you know, guitar center, right? It's, you know, it's, no, no. so, but at the end of the day, like, I always wondered, like, if anybody in the audience even gives a fuck, you know, like, no. can they tell the difference? No, they don't no. give a shit. No, no. You know, no. when you were a kid, did you care? It's like, nope, the guitar is coming no. out of that amp, the bass yeah. is coming out of that amp, you know. The it's singers. definitely, yeah, I totally agree with you. Because, <laughs> like, we, I did a record, like, this is years ago uh, in Chicago, I did a record, and I was like, very um unsane kind of like the band like like you know sounded like insane it's just like very you know kind of driven like heavy bass stuff and the i remember the singer he's gonna kill uh, he, i don't know if he knows now but <laughs> back then he was like no everything's gonna be analog we do everything analog i'm like okay cool uh and then i just i just couldn't get the tone that i wanted on the guitar i was like man and I didn't we didn't have the amps like any good amps there that i wanted to use so i was like i'm just gonna fucking use this line six and at that time it was this, that little red pod thing the uh, bean yeah the bean. and i was like this is gonna sound like shit and i plugged it in i was like oh this doesn't sound too bad and then we recorded it and it sounds great and uh no one's gonna know that it was a fucking you know unless it's like some discerning like you know gearhead but like the regular you know people listen to it are like dude that record's sick man <laughs> well now we, 
know, right? So we know, and yeah. once you cross that line of understanding that what roll up the Celestian fucking roll up, you know, greenbacks and black, I, I have a cabinet with blackbacks in it that I traded yeah. up for, right? For the speakers and put them in a Marshall 900 cabinet, right? Yeah. Sacrilege, right? But the, you know, the sound is just unbeatable. The fucking it, tone, yeah. you know, with through with it and running an 800 through it, it's just like that. Oh, is, dude. <laughs> you know that's fucking that sound man and, and yeah. uh um uh but you know when i would tour um i stopped taking anything valuable on tour with right. me you know yeah. and uh because you know it's either gonna get stolen or it's gonna get trashed and and you know fuck all that uh you know so i, I started getting into um you know the greatest <laughs> uh you know, one of the greatest inventions that that I've been fucking alive to experience was the invention of the tiny little solid state mini amp. You know, love it, love it, love it. Big fan, right? but I can't get anything that's r- loud enough. Oh no, you can. There, there's, this <laughs> com- there's this company out here in Costa Mesa called Quilter. Yeah, that's what yeah. I thought. Yeah, everyone's they're, using those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, they're loud enough. Why? Right. You know. Um, you know, my, my, my general rule of thumb is the less knobs, the better. Right. Right. And, yeah. Uh, I agree. Uh, uh, you know, they make, the, uh, they have this thing. It's a, I think it's called a power block. I have two of them. Yeah. And, it's like the green one, right? It's like a, it's a pedal or is, are you talking well, about the, the actual amp? It's a, about this big and, and it's got okay. three on it, you know, a gain, a volume and a tone and, mm-hmm. and, you know, and you can run, uh, you know, it'll take any pedal, you know, anything you put through it. And, uh, you know, I, I just, all I need is a cabinet, you know, Hey, can I borrow your cabinet? And, you know, it's like, it can very easily be the loudest thing in the room, you know? That's what, so, yeah. That's what I'm, um, yeah. A lot of bands have been using the, the Coulters. I know like a lot are like bigger, bigger, you know, they're like, Oh yeah, we're taking these on the road now because why would I want to take this like vintage amp that I, that's like fucking 45 years old? You know? Yeah. Yeah. That somebody's going to fucking relieve you of, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You know, um, and same with bass, you know, with adolescents have a, a, a an orange uh, bass terror head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's like 400 watts. Maybe it's a solid Those state. Those are great. Solid state tube hybrid, you know, and, and they sound fucking amazing. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, I'm sorry. I, I just, it, it's just funny to me that it's like, you know, there's like this, these two parallel paths of like, tone chasing over here and then the reality like it's going to be a fly-in gig and a jcm 900 yes yeah. <laughs> back line yeah. or yes. you're bringing yeah. your pedal board <laughs> yeah jcm 900s and and for a lot of years leftover crack would you know we were just doing tour with our own gear you know we uh, like would meet somewhere because everybody lived in different states you know we'd yeah. meet in fucking louisiana and uh uh, we did whole tours where we just brought our guitar, <laughs> our guitars, and we, you know, we were the headlining band, and we would show up and just borrow <laughs> from the opening band. Amazing. What do you have over there? Totally. <laughs> that fucking line six, you know, and and uh, um, and that got old. You know, we did that for a few years. That got fucking real old. So yeah, yeah. You know, the the day I was able to have the consistency of my own like you know portable head and uh um you know i put together some pedals that you know would make that little portable head sound like you know a fucking marshall right or, or yeah 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 that technology right now is like pretty incredible like i was like oh my god the amp emulation you're like this actually sounds pretty fucking close to that uber shell you know the you know just whatever amp you want you know so some of it's I was like, this is crazy. And uh, I'm psyched for it because I hate carrying gear now. I'm just like, I'm over it. Like, I want something in a backpack, like my pedals, my fucking amp. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I just ran into a friend of mine. I was just in England last week and I was talking to a friend of mine who's a bass player. And he's like, he was really excited because he just purchased a, a fucking 810 Ampeg, you know. <laughs> or for your, the fridge with, amp. <laughs> with, with, you know, like the Ampeg, you know, t- tube head. And I'm like, that is amazing. That is like the best sounding thing ever. You're yeah. going to completely hate that in one year from now. <laughs> <laughs> you 
will fucking want to set this thing on fire because oh. you'll be carrying it around everywhere and you will find that nobody wants to help you anymore. Yeah. And it's your fucking cross to bear now, you know? <laughs> it's so funny to see like reverb listings for SVTs where it's just like new, like three thousand dollars used, five hundred local pickup, <laughs> not <Get> helping. <laughs> Get it away from me. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a nightmare when you show up to the venue and there's stairs. I'm like, oh, I'm out. I'm not fucking carrying this thing. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've had to do that. Like, especially in Europe and stuff, right? It's just like fucking awesome stairs, you know? And uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that stuff is like puts wear and tear on, on, on a brother, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't is do that it, shit anymore now. It's like, it's it's kind of funny how, you know, like as age goes up, so does the weight of gear. <laughs> yeah. If you're lucky enough to, to have a band where you have like, you know, um, you can employ it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, do that yeah. for you, you know, and still like, you know, watching like Pearl Jam, who I, I, I would just, I'm just throwing a name out there, who, you know, or, or you too. I've seen, I've watched YouTube things where, you know, the edge is just really, he's got all these fucking like underneath the stage, like 10, yep. you know, Vox, vintage Vox amps. And, and like, mm -hmm. does anybody, can you tell that when you're in a stadium listening to it? Yeah. Fuck, oh, you yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. Like I saw them, uh, I'm speaking of you too. I saw them on that tour. They did a 360 tour, which was like apparently the biggest like touring, uh, ever i guess and yeah. a friend of a friend was is adam clayton's bass tech yeah um so he's like yeah i'll take you guys back like you under the stage you can do all and i looked at it i was like they have literally a full ssl console underneath the stage <laughs> i was like what and then all of the edges shit and then i mean it's ridiculous you know you're like this you know so, gone down the, the youtube rabbit hole with angus young's gear who and he has yeah, like yeah. 70s you know, fucking like vintage Marshall. And I guess if you like are a bazillionaire, like why the fuck not? You know, like I'm gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, I think like because they they grabbed a lot of those before they went like through the roof because like because yeah. they're talking about because they have like a warehouse of basically just, all. It's just like a Marshall warehouse <laughs> of AC. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, they'll have like 10 live on like for each side. So yeah. Malcolm has his own like infrastructure to support the, uh, you know, the JMP and Plexis or whatever in various states of health. <laughs> and yeah. Like, because I mean, it was crazy. It's like 10 actually being used and then 30 in various states of repair. And it's just like, there's this whole like ecosystem of people to support all yeah. of this stuff. And it's like, yeah. Um, have you heard, have you heard friend, a, a tube screamer through a JCM 900? I think it's, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. The rest the of us, they still have to have these quilters that are this fucking big. Yeah. That go back. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't Metallica play with like fractals though? It's like some of those, some of the bigger bands are playing with the, the, uh emulators now aren't they oh yeah what's that other one called a uh um, the kemper the kemper. kemper yeah like yeah insanity to me you know like yeah yeah was, uh, yeah well yeah and misfits use the positive grid stuff now like they're oh, really it's what's what's positive grid it, it's another kind of amp modeler like um i can't remember the company that that does it um but we uh like when, at the at the forum show like when discharge opened yeah. um like uh i gave them like some of the brass guys we just gave them a bunch of gear to use so they had yeah, stuff yeah. to play with at the show and so got to like walk around backstage and like you know see all all the gear that they were using on you know everything behind the pumpkins yeah. and um yeah there's just stacks of these positive on the pumpkin <laughs> um yeah that, that was it both sides like bass and and guitar uh jerry had positive grid as well so 
Like, I guess yeah. they give them money, but like, I know the Strokes, um, they practice in our, in the, I'm not, I don't know if the full band does, but I think Julian, the singer does, practices in our practice, in our, in that downtown rehearsal spot. And a friend of mine works for him for the, for the Strokes. And I was like, what do you, are you a guitar tech? He's like, sort of. Now I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, they take out vintage amps that sometimes break. So he's just an amp tech. So he's there just to make sure all the all the vintage amps are running. <laughs> and I was like, what? He's like, yeah. You know, I'm like, they could just get like a fractal or a, you know, Kemper or whatever. <laughs> but the thing is with those things is they're expensive. Yeah. And they look just fucking lame. Man, they look lame. Fucking yeah, I know. That's the thing. It's like so bad. Marshall Cab, man. That fucking, sorry. That looks lame as shit. Well, the the other weird thing is, like, I um, I saw a band that was all uh, modelers. I don't know what they were using, but it I, it might have been like the ne- new neural DSPs. I, I think is what I heard they were using. It was Cradle of Filth at at the Belasco, and I was like up by the stage, and it's so bizarre when there's no cabinets on the stage, like because there's no air being pushed. Drums yeah. are still live, but then, like, if you're in, like, this, like, you know, no man zone, like, oh, they, between yeah. the front of house and the I stage, mm-hmm. it's you're just, not like, feeling anything, right? No, it's not. It's just a very bizarre live experience. It's like, you know, they have the benefit of in ears, so they're rocking out, like, dude, this is loud as fuck. I'm like, this is weird as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I still need to feel it. I mean, I still need to feel that that kind of that fucking push because I played one time where the sound goer was like, "Hey, I don't want to move all that gear, so can you keep your your cab back there? And we'll just put this one in front because I'm going to micers anyways." And I was like, "I don't know about that." And then we played, and I was like, "That sucked because I couldn't feel my amp. <laughs> it sucked." I agree. There's something about the air being pushed yeah. that that changes your molecular structure and and. You know, it, it, it's like, you know, I, I mean, I understand. I, I've seen, you know, bands come in with, with no cabinets and everything going, you know, through the system and, and stuff like that, too. And and that's cool. And I get it. I mean, that's a live experience, too. But it just seems more like a, like, let's do a group streaming fucking listening party. Let's see if we can just gut this any, you know, can we gut this even more? Yeah. Welcome to YouTube Live. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all streaming together fucking great you know i mean i don't know if uh the younger like younger gen, like now like you know, younger kids now if they even like care like you're like oh that band doesn't i can't see their amps and i can't feel anything they you know they're probably them. just like yeah <laughs> all the talk you know? we're having is old man shit they don't fucking care yeah it's like yeah the, the music the music comes out of the fucking phone and right in the, the box yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like, who cares <laughs> yeah. you know yeah, but it's, yeah. It, it's funny, like, cause like around, I have uh, my my oldest daughter is is twelve, and uh, there there's my youngest one. I don't know if that's coming through uh, in the that's background. Cool. <laughs> Check good. Um, the uh, like just playing like records and like I you know, I I don't think it's a, a conscious decision to not care about it. I think it's a not being exposed to it because it's oh, a yeah, that's, big yeah, totally. difference to like, like, cause I'll, I'll go through periods where I haven't listened to like a, an, a, some analog source or like, or even a CD. Like there's a huge difference between what music sounds like on that versus Spotify, like where it's totally compressed. And it's just like, getting exposed to those experiences going to shows and like having the loud amps in the face and like getting that visceral experience is like, Oh, I get it. (laughs) Totally. Um, so, so like of all your, your touring experiences and all the different like gear that you've been through, like what's kind of, What's the one thing that, like, if at having you know been through infinite rabbit holes of <laughs> Google searches um, and trying tons of different gear, like, what what's the one thing that you hear my fucking point? dog? 
you hear my wolf pack in the background? <laughs> I thought it was Naraj's. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Mine's <laughs> what, asleep. What, what do you have over there? What, we, what the, so any walk? dogs that yeah that, that we're upstairs, any dogs that walk by, they're like yelling in unison out the window. Get the fuck off my lawn! Fuck you! Fuck you! Yeah. Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> What I have left, what I didn't sell, um, and I, you know, I don't play guitar too much anymore unless I'm writing and, and recording because uh, I've been playing mostly in, in the bass and the adolescence. Yeah. Um, I really love playing guitar, but at the moment I'm not doing that in any band. Um, but the gear that I, that I, that, um, I will not part with is, um, uh, I have a, uh, a Marshall um, 800 uh, reissue, which is actually pretty nice. Um, and I got it for, for real cheap, you know, a long time ago. Um, I think like 900 bucks, you know, and, and uh, yeah, but I have that. I have a, a silver, um, uh, one of the silver Jubilees from the 80s. But, those but a are amazing. I, I, I remember those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have one of those. And then I have a, um, a Vox AC30 that that I've had gutted, and um, it's no longer a Vox technically. Had it gutted and wired, um, hand wired, point to point, everything. So like all the boards and everything were removed. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have also a head, a, a Vox head that is a 30 watt, um, which is all hand wired, you know, point to point, no um, circuit boards in it, and that thing is like uh it, it just sounds i mean it's golden and it's 30 watts and it's so fucking loud oh, they're amazing it's like right. so did so you had the amp when you bought it it was like the the printed board and then yeah so what what did you notice like before and after like what was like kind of the transformation there it was real fizzy you know yeah fizzy um uh you know um if you put any effects in front of it, uh, it just, you know, the, the uh, any overdrives, let alone trying to um, you know, get any sort of metal sound out of it, which I was doing, you know, uh, at the time with leftover crack, it was just garbage, you know, and, and I got it really cheap, you know, a couple hundred bucks for it was just, a, um, uh, I can't even remember what it was originally, uh, but, you know, just to, your average, you know, AC30 crappy circuit board you know uh 90s one right yeah and i took this, it to the I, what's that i was gonna say like some of the 90s ones are like when the 90s reissues are kind of it what kind, does it, it does it have the um, el nico blues because uh you've recorded paul minor haven't you brad yes he it, has a vox with the the blues in it and it's fucking killer sounding this thing had what did it have in it originally? It had like um, like some Vox ceramics ones that oh, were okay. they were not awesome. And so I removed <laughs> it and I put in a an, an Almico blue, a fifteen, yeah. and a uh, um, a uh, greenback, but it's the seventy five hertz one. It's like a base greenback, right? Okay. Ooh. So I paired those two up, and it sounds. <clears throat> phenomenal you know because it's 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 the you know um uh you, you know the it but the my theory was that the you know um the 75 hertz one and, and a, you know a speaker that is is designed for more bass response um would give it some fucking body you know mm -hmm. and it does you know mm -hmm. that's uh, interesting it, yeah and i took it to this amp guy uh, you know uh kevin nelson who's here in garden grove and so just fucking gut this thing, you know, and, and make it sound fucking <laughs> make it sound awesome, you know, and, and uh, um, but I like having a, you know, a, a clean palette that I can put things on. And, and if you put effects on it, it's not going to be like um, fizzy is the best way I can describe, yeah, yeah. It, you know. Yeah. And, and, and you know, it, do take like that too. A, a fucking Marshall 800 is the same way, you know. With a, yeah. with a fucking game knob on it. Yeah, I'd love I the the reissue set like I've played a couple and they all 
sounded pretty great. Like that's the that's definitely like my regret amp. Like I, I've had multiple over the years, and just always, you know, we've talked about it on the show before. Yeah. Just yeah, like I had one too, soup that yeah. they would be five hundred dollars forever and ever. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, one day that changed. Yes. <laughs> Even the, the I've played through the reissue nine hundreds, which are historically like the, the one of the big failures of fucking Marshall, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, um, and the reissues of the nine hundreds fucking sound really good. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that it's kind of not even a faithful reproduction because if you're going to yeah. do a reissue, <laughs> you'd have to make an amp that sounded like fucking dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> like the nine hundreds are you know, known for just mm -hmm. horrible, you know, so they kind of like, uh, uh, you know, um, you know, made a new amp that, um, you know, it has two channels and they're fucking good, man. They're, those are cool too. Yeah. I, I did have a, a 900 that, that sounded great. And then I traded it. It was a, it was a 50 watt that, um, had been gone through with, it was like a, I match set of like groove tubes. I don't know where they were, where they were from, but whatever they had done to the amp, like it sounded fantastic. And then of course, you know, like always the next thing was like, got to trade in. I was like, well, I need a hundred watts. So like I got some, and I don't even know it was a, it was a early like transitional 900 from uh, the 800 to 900. So it was, it was a 900, but it was a single channel. It wasn't the SLX, but it did have like dual gain stages yeah. on it. So right. it was kind of like uh, a driven channel and then like a boosted channel, I guess. Um, and it didn't sound that great. And the transformers blew like within like, <laughs> two weeks of me oh, yeah. trading in my really good head yeah <laughs> this one yeah and, you know i mean in those some of those 900s you know i take that back i've played through good sounding 900s they were just so hit and miss right right it's like you never knew what you were going to get you know so yeah if you got a good sound yeah. you probably should have held on to it but i've done that too i've gotten rid of things thinking that you know this is an endless supply and i'll be able to get another one and or for you know, for five hundred bucks, right? Like or three hundred dollars, and days are long gone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man, uh, reverb fucked everything up. Reverb fucked everything up. Damn you, reverb! Because <laughs> that used to be like that was always a fun thing to do on tour was like find the local store and like find like hidden gems and shit yeah. that you've never seen and like. Yep, it's a it's small town. That's yeah. It's the same thing that Discogs, you know, did to records and shit, right? It's like, you know, you used to be able to find like cool gear for cheap, you know, and and, uh, and if you're a musician, that's what it's all about, right? Find yeah, cool yeah. Cheap, yeah, for you know? cheap. <laughs> and, and like now everybody knows what everything's fucking worth. All they have yeah. to do is type in, you know, type it in. And so, like a lot of that fun, I think is is, you know, that's gone for sure. Yeah. 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 It's like you can't find those like those gems, you know, like back in the day I was like, oh my God, I found this guitar that dude sent like I got my SG 72 SG with the Bigsby um for 350 bucks because a dude wanted money for like drugs or something. She's like, Yeah, man, I just you know, I gotta get rid of it. I was like, Cool. And it was like one of those like trading papers, you know, you, that you yeah. that you'd find. Yeah, yeah. I was like, totally can't get that. <laughs> I mean you can still find, but it's like few and far between. Yeah, right? yeah really doesn't care you know like yeah. i want to get fucking rid of this thing because i need drugs you know yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah I, i've done that <laughs> once or twice <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i've been on both ends of that <laughs> um well brett thank you so much for for joining us like yeah, is, is there any like um i know like you have the instant ruin demo up now um is there anything like i know you mentioned you're going back to, to england in september like what what do you guys have coming up and where can people check it out we're doing uh more shows in england right now because the two of the other guys the two other guys that are in the band both live out there um, oh, okay. 
so uh um you know i think eventually i'd like to do some shows here with it right but um you know for now it's just like you know it's kind of cool to, to just you know um to go out there if i can get the money up right and, and just you know uh um you know there's a million places to play out there too right yeah uh, and but adolescence is doing uh um you know we're recording this weekend and then we have a show in san diego at the end of the month and then we're doing some more stuff with the circle jerks and negative approach and then that, uh, that looks killer yeah that show, yeah S- such a great tour and then going back to we're going to europe adolescents are going to europe in in july um and uh and that's you know as far out as, it, as everything's booked right now you know yeah. so. that seems like that's kind of the safe play <laughs> yeah yeah. yeah right yeah like, yeah so, it's just like well you know, <laughs> you look further out if you want but you know be careful i mean it yeah it's it just it's crazy it was crazy to see like when you know keith morris got got sick and then just halted the whole tour the whole tour and i'm just like still i'm like yeah. oh god yeah <laughs> People, people are still getting sick, you know, and, and uh, I mean, that you know, in the UK, they like getting back into the States. If I would have tested positive, you know, I wouldn't have been able, <laughs> wouldn't have been able to come back. Right. Oh, sure. mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, you have to take your test a negative. Right. You know, so. Yeah. So uh, for, like I, w- I was in Europe, like right as everything was closing down. Yeah, and we were coming back. We were, we were coming back from from tour over there, and like, uh, go to the uh, what's it, uh, passport, you know, immigration, yeah, immigration. Yeah, immigration. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can use words. Um, the uh, <laughs> going through immigration, they're like, uh, did you go to China? I was like, nope. They're like, cool, come on in. <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> I was like, we we were in uh, Milan right as they were closing it down. Like we were the last show in Milan. <laughs> yeah, and Italy was the first country to get hit pretty hard. Milan specifically. Yeah, yeah. 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 They didn't know then what they what they know now, right? So, um, but anymore, you know, I, I I don't like being on tour as much as I used to. I don't mind being home. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah, you know? oh, it's yeah. pretty great too. Yeah, I got to, you know, I dig hanging out with my fam, you know, my dogs. And I mean, I like traveling, you know, but yeah, yeah. find that balance is yeah. where it's at, you know. Awesome. Man, yeah, well, Brad, it was a pleasure having you on. Um, yeah, glad we could make much. it happen. Thank and you so much, guys. I, I, I hope I provided you with some, some you know, yeah, it was fun. looking yeah. forward. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll see you around town. I'll see you around town. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you, Thank you so right. much, Brad. Yeah. Take care. Right, bye. Boy.